elevate, to lift up and improve morally, intellectually, physically, relationally, financially, or culturally. Hey you guys, it's Mish. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing how you can elevate your finances. So when it comes to your financial journey or your financial story, I definitely consider it to be a cycle. And I believe that some people don't consider it to be a cycle, which is why they get to a point in life where they're stagnant financially. So if you wanna hear about the tips and suggestions that I have, be sure to stick around and check out the rest of the video. First things first, when it comes to elevating your finances, you first have to decide where you are at financially and remember earlier i said i consider it to be a cycle and i think that there's three parts of this cycle one is going to be the present two is going to be your near future and three is going to be your distant future so when you think of it in terms like that it's constantly evolving and repeating itself because as you move through in life and time passes you go to the next step and then once you reach the last step that technically again becomes your present what was once your distant future is now your present so then you start back over with okay i'm in the present now i have to think about my near future now i have to come up with goals for my distant future as far as time frame i can do the present to be anything from now until two years near future to be two years to five years and then your distant future is going to be five years to ten years and the reason that i do that is because i know that sometimes we as people come up with these goals however those goals are not immediately attainable and they take years it's a process and when you start thinking of it as a process you can better manage the time that you have and make sure that the goals that you set for yourself are appropriate according to that length of time so give you guys a quick example i want to pay off my credit card debt buy a house and invest in duplex so as far as those things my credit card debt is a thing that's now like it's affecting me now so that's going to be my main priority then after that i want to buy a house so over the next two to five years that is something that i'm thinking about and then lastly now that i've bought a house i can focus on establishing new properties acquiring new assets you have these three different areas i also believe that you can work in two different areas so you can work in your present and your near future however i don't think that you should be working in your present your near future in your distant future regardless of where you're at financially there are certain things that need your attention now and there are certain things that you can look off to in the distant future now that we have decided where we're actually at in our financial journey now we can establish some goals and make sure that the goals that you're actually setting for yourself require effort but not too much effort to where they become unrealistic and unattainable I say I want to pay off my $32,000 in student debt in three months. If I don't have the income to support that, which I don't, then that's not a realistic goal for me. And it's just going to discourage me from the process. Because as I move closer to that deadline that I've set for myself within the goal, it's just like, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You're so silly. And then that negative self-talk comes in. And mindset does play a role in your financial goals. Three, we have knowledge and application. So you have to get out there, you have to learn. Like you don't know what you don't know until you put yourself out there. So as far as knowledge, you can be getting that from podcasts, you can be getting that from books, you can get that from attending seminars, you can get that from having conversations. As long as you're constantly getting new knowledge to then establish okay now i know this now i need to build off of this and then once you've gotten to a point where you think okay i've uh gotten enough knowledge about this particular subject now i can start ap applying this knowledge to continue throughout the process so for example i'm going to use buying a house so in the beginning you might just be like okay like i want to buy a house i want to buy a house i want to buy a house so what that might look like you might actually want to talk to people that are actually homeowners then once you are talking to people that are actually homeowners then you might hear them talking about okay like we have our closing costs we have our down payments we have pmi we have different types of loans that you may take on purchasing the house okay what is your amount and okay how much is your realtor going to get 
off of this purchase? What type of things do you need to have as far as insurances? Like, where are you actually at? Are you in a condo? Uh, are you in a townhouse? Are you in an actual house? How this is gonna affect the percentage that is on your loan? And then taxes, is there a lien against the house? Things like that, so that you start like, okay, now I have enough knowledge, now I have some stuff to look for when I actually go to look at these houses, condos, townhouses, whatever so be it. So you have enough knowledge. Now that you have a knowledge, when you're going out, you're actually applying that. You're actually asking the right questions. And sometimes when you ask the right questions, the response may be something you're like, oh, I never heard of that. Now let me go research that. And then it starts this continuous cycle. And then what can I afford for a mortgage? Like, yes, while I may be able to afford $1,200 in the apartment that I live in, affording $1,200 for the mortgage may not be the exact same thing because now you're actually responsible for other things pertaining to the house if something breaks. Keep those type of things in mind too, just using that example. Next we have our favorite, which is budgeting. You're gonna be tracking your expenses. And I feel that you should always be tracking your expenses because it's not necessarily, you know, the budget itself. Why you should always have a budget. If you don't have one, be sure to check out one of my videos talking about budgets or seeing me budget uh, my own finances throughout the month. I think there's plenty of other thing that comes with actual budgeting that it teaches you. Like it teaches you discipline. It teaches you how to be resourceful. It causes you to to reevaluate some things when your plans don't go accordingly. And then it's then gonna transition into you tracking your assets, your net worth, uh, determining what these liabilities are, things like that, which are crucial uh, to your own financial journey. So budgeting is a must. By budgeting, we have our emergency fund. Life happens to everyone. No one is excluded from this process. So determine what number you feel comfortable with. Number is $20,000. I feel if I have easy access to $20,000, everything else is gonna be pretty much okay. I can't think of anything where I need to come up with $15,000 right up, like by tomorrow. I don't have those type of issues. So $20,000 is good for me. So the reason I determined $20,000, so I have my three to six months emergency fund equated into that number. And then I have a few account minimums on the different accounts that I have. So my accounts is uh, my high yield saving. Then I have uh, savings and checkings at two different banks. But as I said, my number is $20,000 and that accounts for a variety of things my three to six month savings and then just in case like something came up like oh okay i mean my bills are automated and i do have that incorporated into my actual google calendar just as a reminder like hey you got your gas bill coming out tomorrow but i may have signed up for something five months ago that i forgot was coming out today because it slipped my mind and i didn't add it into my calendar however i still want to have enough money in the bank to support those things i don't want it to get denied and i don't want to get any type of overdraft fee so if you haven't decided what is your number decide what your number is and don't continuously change that number as you're going to achieve that number in other words I decided $20,000. I'm not gonna get to $22,000 and be like, okay, now I'm gonna change that to $25,000. $20,000 is a good amount of money for me. After I reach that $20,000 cap, then that means that all that extra money is money that I'm gonna be spending towards investments and bettering myself and a few other things. It took me a while to come up with that number because I kept changing. Like at one point, that number is like, okay, as long as I have like $12,000, like I'm cool. But now that I have a house and all, that means that that number has changed for me. So I'm not near the $20,000 mark overall because purchasing this house costs $22,000 between like furniture, appliances, down payments and closing costs so now i'm slowly building that back up however i do happen to be working in present as well as near future and the reason that i feel that you can work in both is because i was investing up into that point 
but then of course i withdrew all this money to fund this beautiful place so now i'm just like okay i still want to continue invest investing now am i doing it as heavily as i was before no i've kind of dialed it back a little bit but it's still something like okay i still need to be mindful of certain cheaper stocks because being that i'm not doing anything immediately i do believe investing is for the long term so with that in mind like i'm looking at a lot of the newer things that are coming out which are somewhere around like one dollar to about fifteen dollar per share or things that have been recently established to see if it's going to be something bigger five to ten years down the line from now Next, we have investing and making sure that your portfolio is diversified. What that means to people that are unsure or unaware, it just means that if I'm investing, all of my stocks are not going to be in the financial industry. They're not all going to be in the healthcare thing. They're not all going to be in finances. I'm going to spread that out and that's best for you. Like, so just say, and the reason when you want to do that, so just say tomorrow here has like a drastic, drastic, like stocks are just plummeting left and right and all your money is in the healthcare industry. Then that means everything that you've established, everything that you built is basically cut in half or more or gone and you don't want to be in that position sprinkle yourself around and then also depending on where you are in your investment journey too that will determine the type of stocks that you're going to buy for anybody here that's new to investing this is something that was told to me by one of my co-workers which i was just like dang i wish i had played around with that a little bit before i started investing on my own but there's this app called Weeble where it simulates the actual stock market in real time however you have access to a certain amount of fake money so if you decide okay i want to start off with ten thousand dollars you will be investing that fake ten thousand dollars into the actual stock market and then just tracking it to see how it goes the beneficial side of this app is that it allows you to get to learn the stock market get to learn what trends look like in the stock market get to determine how to read like an actual candlestick when you're determining if you should buy a stock or not buy a stock. So that's something that you should definitely try. If you're not in the point of where you're actually starting to invest yet. So that means that you may be saving, you know, $25 per paycheck on the side while you're not investing it, you're just saving it. In the meantime, you're going into Webull and purchasing some stocks and seeing how they go over the course. So then when you actually get to the point of investing your own money, you have a certain level of confidence and a certain level of understanding, which will hopefully ensure that you're picking the correct stocks and you know which types of things to look for during that actual journey. Great tip, once again, Webull. And next we have multiple streams of income. This is something a lot of people talk about. And I hope that, you know, over the past few years, we've seen the importance of having multiple streams of income. But what I feel that commonly gets like misconstrued with that statement is that everybody makes like having multiple streams of income as if it's like every source of income is bringing you in like a minimum of like $8,000 a month. No, that's not the case. So you might have your traditional nine to five and then and on the side, you might be a freelancer or a consultant in some shape or form. You might uh, rent out your house on um, Airbnb. You might rent out your car on Turo. You might be doing things like that. You might be buying vending machines and that's your extra source of income where that might only generate $400, $500 a month. However, that's extra income. And that then in turn, that extra four to $500 a month could then be money that you're investing into the stock market. That could be four or $500 that you're saving each month as a down payment to a future property that you're going to have. And then before you know it, like you're going to have five, 10, $15,000 saved 
for this event. So don't let people discourage you from having multiple sources of income just because each source of income isn't bringing you thousands of dollars. Like before I can get to thousands of dollars, I have to have ones and tens and twenties. So don't let that discourage you. Continue with that. You never know how that might transpire into something else, something more profitable. But in the end, extra money is extra money. And I want a little extra money. Lastly, I have here to attain assets and limit your liability. Depending on where you're at financially will determine if this is something that you'll be doing or something that you'll just be mindful of as you're continuing through whichever phase you're in in this financial cycle. Right now, I fully acquired uh, a few assets and then my liabilities one i consider depending on how you look at it like right now my one liability is my credit card that i'm paying off if you haven't caught my story about that be sure to check that out in my budgeting video but right now that's a liability for me so the money that i'm paying to wells fargo i could easily be applying to other areas another liability for me is my student loan that i was so kindly reminded that my payments will start uh back up in may and they'll be 376 dollars so that's something that i'm just like okay like i don't want to pay 376 dollars for the rest of my life so making sure that i equate that in getting rid of that liability so once that liability it's paid off and done with, then that's the extra $376 that I have to disperse other places to reach my other financial goals. I hope that these tips truly helped you out. I wanna thank you so, so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet. I do videos every Monday and Friday. Monday tend to be my financial videos and Friday tend to be my fitness videos. So as usual, take time to enjoy your own journey. And the reason that I say that is because I believe when it comes to fitness and both finances, those are two things that do take time to get you to where you want to be but the process itself is discouraging however it builds up a sense of appreciation for whichever goal that you're trying to attain for yourself now personally me and my finances like i've learned a lot over the past five years and i give five years is because back in 2017 that was the point where i really started to think about my financial situation and where I wanted to be a few years from that point. And a lot of those things, you know, has actually happened for me, which I'm proud of myself. But within that five years too, there came uh, more knowledge within has like prompted me to start thinking about other things and figuring out, you know, how to invest. I'm still very early in the investment game. Like there's still a lot of stuff that I need to figure out for myself to invest more because i'm investing like very minimal but you know something is better than nothing when it comes to investing so i just want to encourage you guys to continue your own journey to make sure that you're constantly feeding yourself with new information new knowledge and then applying that you have to stay consistent throughout this journey we know consistency is key so you do stuff enough time and you start to build up a level of confidence you start to have different conversations you start to look for new information and then you start to conduct yourself in a different way and at the end of the day we all just want to reach the goals that we set for ourselves so enjoy the rest of your day i'll catch you guys in the comments into the next video bye Thank you.